If I look familiar, I'm apparently a lecturer out of central casting. This, more than anything, helps me to manage my imposter syndrome, having only come to this job in my 40s following a career as a designer. Studio Ordinary is a meeting of disability studies and design research. It's an interdisciplinary research studio across Duncan of Jordanston College of Art and Design, education and social work, and other schools. I founded it with Professor Fiona Kumari Campbell, whose talk you can also hear in these Discovery Days, Andrew Cook, Eddie Small, Theo Mladenov, Katie Brown, and Paul Galt. This is our design manifesto, Supernormal Design for Extraordinary Bodies, which clashes together ideas and words from disability studies and from industrial design, ideas that have not been combined before. Here's how it starts. We propose a new approach to the design of disability objects at once radical and unremarkable. We challenge the assumption that the role of design need be either to draw attention away from impairment or else to focus attention on disability. We reject this polarization as utterly simplistic. We propose a more nuanced alternative that has so much more in common with design in other everyday contexts, given that disability is part of the fabric of everyday life. In addition to publishing this manifesto academically um, within critical disability studies, we also printed it and offered it on sale um, in the shop at DNA Dundee, of which more later. Disability activist Liz Jackson speaks of an exhausting expectation of transformation that disabled people can feel imposed upon them to overcome their disability. We would like to evolve unremarkably, she says. This led to an interesting moment in my application for this chair when any applicant is required to state how they contribute to the university's vision and values. And the university's declared purpose is transforming lives, so I felt I needed to qualify this, that whilst this might be seen in terms of co-ownership of our research, Studio Ordinary's ethos is absolutely not to transform lives by overcoming disability. Instead, Studio Ordinary works with diverse disabled people to understand their stance towards disability and then to embody this through design. And also with others concerned with the cultural role of designed objects. Peter White's series of interviews with other disabled people on Radio 4 is entitled No Triumph, No Tragedy. This in itself is a challenge to the dominant narratives around disability the dominance of which Studio Ordinary is here to help challenge too. So what would it mean to redesign a prosthetic hand, for example, to embody that stance of no triumph, no tragedy? What alternatives might there be to cosmetic covers that attempt to pass as human skin and overtly robotic hands that promise superhuman powers? Hands of X was funded by the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council and proposed with Mark Miodognik's Institute of Making at University College London. We reached for a palette of materials at once familiar from everyday environments, yet rich in visual and tactile qualities and associations. Hands of X was not just a matter of redesigning hands as objects though, but with our mentors, who you will see and hear in a minute, we reimagined prosthetic hands being chosen in an eyewear retailer rather than in a hospital. Choice was central. Even a choice within a curated palette could engender a feeling of ownership. Together with Dr. Andrew Cook, who you see here, and other partners, we prototyped this service as an experience, and filmmaker Jared Schiller filmed our mentors experiencing and reflecting on it, including our dear colleague Eddie Small, who we all miss in Studio Ordinary. And here is a two-minute edit 
of Jared Shiva's film. Hands of X Orderly rows of small square tiles sit in slots on a dark table, resembling piano keys in an earth tone palette. I like, this, I like the colour, I like the sort of neutrality of it. Of it. It, it. It looks quite warm as well. And there's an unthreateningness about wood that certainly I feel is much more fitting to who I think I am and what I would like to, to wear and the perception that I would like to give out to people. The unseen speaker leans on the table with both hands, one of which is clad in a brown leather glove. There's something about skin tone. A white man with a black prosthetic hand considers several tiles. It's obviously, well, maybe it's not obviously, but that, that seems to be suggested in the colour selection. Um, uh, and you can probably tell I've never really been that um, fussed on matching, matching skin tones. I love this acetate. A woman with digitless hands considers a selection of tiles. I love the interesting pattern through it. Wooden hand shapes are set out. And I think the leather that goes based with it is quite a nice bright one. And I like this wood the best out of the lot. It's the darkest and I, I just liked it. And I think that that's a really nice texture of leather where the creases and the cracks and things are more obvious to me. When have I ever thought this arm is mine? Not at all. Never, ever, ever have I ever thought this is part of me. It's something I put on that can be a stick, it can turn my driving wheel, I can clean my golf club on the side of it. Never been part of me. Aesthetics are important. Point to anything that in, in the non-natural world. And it's been designed, it's been thought about, it, it has been, you know, I, I, it's important. A small box adorned with three different tiles is closed with a lid that reads, Hands of X. For most prosthetic users, builders, wearers, whatever, it's, uh, the, the cosmetic part is, is, is small and it shouldn't be. In summer 2019, we curated an exhibition, Hands of X, Design Meets Disability, in the Michelin Design Gallery at the V&A Dundee. The V&A themselves estimated that approaching 140,000 visitors engaged with issues of choice and ownership in the context of prosthetic hands. And 7,000 people, disabled and non-disabled, sat down and chose a hand for themselves and explained to us some of the reasons behind their choices. They were invited to think of this choice in the context of their own clothing choices and self-image, rather than within a medical model of disability. Challenging the medicalisation of disability has continued into a fellowship with the Healthcare Improvement Studies Institute, co-design, choice and a sense of ownership in rehabilitation services. Healthcare improvement is an interdisciplinary field, yet I was interested in drawing influences from areas beyond the expected. So I started by mapping interesting people and unlikely connections, like eyewear and disability studies. The resulting triangle of healthcare, disability and culture helped to conceive of new conversations, here shown in red in the middle of the triangle. This being 2020 by now, the study had to be reconceived in lockdown and Jared Schiller again filmed four conversations with me, but online this time. And here is a first two minute cut of our film. Um, the fuller film will be released soon. There's this kind of um, assumption that we live in this natural state that that just exists and it's like no everything about it is is designed and built and in being constructed has excluded people i think your point links very much to the move towards trying to have a better social model of disability and, and things like that and we're just we're just not there yet are we words like dignity of risk uh you know tom oh tom he's a difficult client um, but his dignity of risk is to go home and risk not um, managing on the bathboard your job is my empowerment but 
neither of us are going to be successful unless I understand your expertise and you understand my life. Do you think that people might be going the other direction and drawing attention to the prosthesis? Since the 90s in the United States with things like the Americans with Disabilities Act, you know, to draw attention to your disability is a way of marking your pride. Someone else is making a decision about the surgical shapings of our bodies. I think that really has this effect on who we are and how we understand our um, our own bodies and our own place in the world. I chose my amputation, but my parents chose not to have my leg amputated. And I guess that has affected also my choice of prosthesis as well. I want to end with this photograph taken in Maruni Wood Industries factory in Hiroshima in Japan. It's a craftsman finishing a wooden chair. There is both a seriousness and a delight, a sophistication and a hard-won simplicity missing from disability objects. This is important. This is the stuff of everyday lives.